My name is Michael DeFord, and I'm the lead investigator for the Seekers Paranormal Society. About seven years ago, I had my first paranormal experience. Now armed with the latest in paranormal equipment, I'm setting out to find the truth. Joining me on my quest to capture evidence is my equipment tech Ramon Beavis and investigator Steve Weldon. Take a front seat into our paranormal world as we are driven into the unknown. We are Seekers Paranormal Society. Hey Seekers fans, this is Michael the Forty, and with us is uh, Ramon Vivas in the passenger seat. And we are going to the old Hamilton County Jail. It's in Jasper, Florida. And from what we've read, uh, it was built back in 1893. It closed in 1984. And apparently the sheriff used to live there. And it's also uh, known as the, the spot where the last legal hanging or execution uh, was taking place east of the Mississippi. So we're going to be uh, investigating that and I hope you guys enjoy. We really think it's going to be a great investigation. There's been quite a few people that have died uh, in this old jail. There's about 15 to 18 cells and there's two solitary confinement cells. And uh, so we're pretty excited and we can't wait to get there. Seekers fans, this is Michael DeForty. Got Ramon Vivas on camera right now. I'm now standing in what used to hold the women here at the uh, Hamilton County Jail. Uh, like I said before, this jail was built in 1893. It closed in 1984. So it's roughly 100 years old since we're in 2014. Actually, a little bit older than that. Um, so we're getting ready to start the investigation. And we just want to show you guys how this actually looks in here. This is a real jail. This was in use. Uh, right now it's pretty cold. It's actually 55 degrees in here right now. Uh, they actually had a, a freak cold front come through and obviously there's no AC or heat or anything in here. So whatever the temperature is outside, it is in here. Plus you're talking cold steel and you're talking bricks and concrete floors. So this is how the women were treated here. A little bit, we're going to show you how it was segregated and the blacks and the whites were actually separated um, upstairs in their jail cells. So in 1893, these were the holding cells for the people that possibly got drunk or needed kind of a place to stay, if you will, overnight. Possibly having a domestic dispute, getting drunk, having some kind of drug issue. And then, after 12 hours, the guards would set them free. Back in those days when someone had tooth decay or had an issue, they came down here to the medical ward. As you can see, some of this stuff is really old. Not the type of things we would use now. If you needed to be sedated, these are the kind of beds they strapped you in. There was no getting out at that point in time. And if you were part of the female side of the prison, this is where you gave birth. These long stretchers. Babies would get weighed here, and I can guarantee this isn't accurate. Or the cell for the black males that would have possibly gotten charged, maybe with a pretty heinous crime, possibly a felony. This is the cell that they would stay in. These are the beds that they would sleep on. They would obviously have a mattress on here, probably very, very thin, but this is where they spent the rest of their sentence. Clear across the jail, on the other side, is where the white guy's cells are. And we're gonna visit them next. Now these here are the white guy's cells. Not very different from the black males across the jail. But I can tell you that there is one big difference. Created on this area of the prison had their own rec area. 
And as you can see, some of the medical equipment is actually still here. They used to treat these men. Now lots of investigators, or even teams, will come here, spend a few hours, and then they'll go home and review their evidence. But the way the Secret Paranormal does things, we do things a little bit differently. So we decided to spend the night. Okay, green, red, green, red, red, and I kept doing it. And it did it for like 20 or 30 seconds. And I think I got 10 seconds of it on tape because I didn't realize it at first. I'm looking at the LCD screen. I didn't see it. And then when I looked up, it just kept going on and on and on. And I'm like, what is it doing? And then I finally, I put it out and it stopped. And I'm like moving it around going, okay, is there an electrical outlet, something like that? And there's nothing, there's nothing here that has any kind of electrical value. Everything is turned off. Yeah. I mean, it was so cool. It was like the coolest thing I have seen on, uh, with, uh, with our K2 here. It was pretty neat. What's wrong? I could have swore I just saw somebody standing right there. I've had the camera over there the whole time. Outside the cell. That's where I've been looking. Is that you? Are you standing outside the cell? You don't want to come in? I'm going to put the flashlight right there on the ground. Just knock it over. That's all I want you to do is just knock it over. Push it over. Just to let me know that you know that you're here. Just to let us know that you're perfect. That's perfect. That's excellent. Try to push it over. It went off, yeah, I got, I got it on my camera too. Yeah, it was going berserk. So it's it, it's trying, whoever is, is in here with us. Are you a male? Just go over to that green light there. Make it blink, let us know that you're a male. We'll give you a few, okay, so you are a male. Okay. Yeah, it's very good. Thank you very much. What are you in here for? You in here for a uh, drunk, disorderly conduct? Just make that light blank if that's what you were in here for. Were you in here for fighting? So you're a male. For sure you're a male. Just, I know this has probably seemed very stupid to you, but this is the only way that we can communicate with you. Just go up to that green light and blink it so that we know that you are a male. You're a man. Come on, I know it's stupid. We just want to make sure that that wasn't, you know, a problem with our equipment. Are you still here with us?
Come on, just make the lights blink, brother. That's all you gotta do. We were definitely getting some communication in here. Oh yeah. There's, there's definitely somebody here, whether they're outside this cell or they're inside, but it's a male. Whoever it is, are, are you, are you a guard? Were you a prison guard here at the, at the jail? Okay, so you weren't a guard. Were you an inmate? Were you a prisoner? Did you spend time in here? So you had to be sedated. Perfect. Wow. Okay. All right. Whoa. Whoa. All right. Wow, you must be pretty strong to be able to do that. It's amazing. Wow. Holy crap. So you feel like talking, huh? Were you here for... Were you drunk? Did you go after a guard? And then it just stopped. There we go. I was gonna say, did you go? Did you leave? Wow, I went all the way across. Whoa. Wow. I've never seen it go that high. Are you male or are you female? Are you male? New viewers who are watching this this room, and I'm going around the room now, there is not a lick of electrical in here. There's no, there's no wires, there's the wires that you see here are just hanging, they're not plugged into anything. They're dead. They're dead, it's all dead. And besides, we, we scan these areas before we come in to get a baseline reading there was absolutely no electrical fluctuation whatsoever. And this instrument here detects different types of energies and it didn't fluctuate at all. Then all of a sudden we come in here, we start communicating, we start talking to somebody that we feel is in here and we get amazing responses on the K2 that are blinking like just uncontrollably, and then boom. As quick as they came, is as fast as they went. Did that chair hold me? Possibly. K2. K2's going off? It just lit up. Could it be for me walking? I just lost my battery. Your battery's dead? It's about to die. I had uh, 33 minutes. K2 went off, and now I have yellow. There's nothing in there. Really? Okay. So we got more, more camera malfunctions. If you're messing with my camera, if there's something about me that you just don't... Maybe it's because I'm Spanish. 
are you trying to tell me something? Can you light it up again? Yeah, what was that? I don't know, but I heard that. It was, it was, it was loud. I heard it too. Where did it sound like it came from? Somewhere on that side of the room, on your side of the room. Cause that wasn't me. It was like a like a loud tap. It's like a. Yeah. I, and I heard it really loud on here. Finish this. Did you hear that? Yeah. That wasn't me. That's that's the second time now. And the same vicinity over here. Is in the same area. It's nope. like near me, behind me. Do you know that song, Hair Haircut and Shave? Dude, it feels so cold in here. Yeah, I'm cold too. Would you like us to start a fire in the fireplace? Warm up the room a little bit? My battery's still flashing yellow. I, I was gonna say, like, how long is it gonna? I fly? said I had thirty. It said I had thirty-four minutes, but then it just the battery thing emptied itself, and it's. I have a little battery with a line through it. And it's flashing. That's really strange. So about twenty minutes left on mine. with us here in this cell. It just seems like a really awkward, you know, like an awkward room, like... I mean, like, this gurney can be taken out. But the dentist chair looks pretty permanent. I mean, the dentist chair has been in here since I've come here. You don't have bolts on the bottom of it? I don't think so. No. Like Holy sh**. What? Did you just breathe on me? I don't know. No, I did though. Did you go? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Look. The T2 is just spazzing out. I just got a friggin' gust of wind in my face and it was friggin' cold. That's why I asked you to do it on my face, because this is exactly what it felt like. Is there somebody here? Do you want to talk to us? The spirit box seems to be kind of rapid. Like, mm -hmm. Almost like it's moving too fast. Crap. I don't know if it doesn't go that fast. Uh, yeah, it just seems like it's 
I mean, it's it's common. I mean, it's. Can you talk through this device? Talk through that device right there. What's your name? Did you just say Lou? I don't know. It just sounded like you said Lou. Saw it. Two, five. It's not now. Feel very uneasy. Yeah, like what the frig? Why? Why do I feel the same way? Because. Is there somebody in here with us? Do you not want us in here? My stomach just feels very... You feel like butterflies. Like I'm about to throw up. Not, it's not scary stuff like you get startled. Like I feel like I'm gonna puke. My throat is tight. Like. Alright. Let's get out of here because whatever is in here doesn't want us in here. And I know that the camera can't see this right now. But the K2 meter is just absolutely going berserk right now. Keep going. Uh, Michael DeForty here, Ramon Vivas on camera. Just wanted to fill you guys in on uh, the investigation. We've captured a lot of really, really great evidence so far. Uh, K2 hits, ghost box session. Um, like I said before, we are spending the night here. Uh, so, you know, we're going to actually stay here and hopefully we're going to gather even more evidence uh, as we're asleep. And then we're going to be combing through the evidence as the days go by. And hopefully we're going to catch things that we didn't catch. Uh, when we were here and, and actually running the equipment. So uh, stay tuned, subscribe to our channel, please. Uh, you know, this keeps us very motivated so that we go out and do more investigations. And uh, you, the viewers, get to see the amazing evidence and videos that we come up with and, and put online. So again, thanks for watching and hope you guys enjoy. Stay tuned for the next investigation.